Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about the second trigonometric ratio. I really like trigonometric ratios. I think they sound very intelligent. If your parents were to ask you, my parents were really good about this every single day. They were like, tell me something you learned today in school. Uh, my, parent, my parents were always expecting some sort of answer. There's a pen. They were always expecting some sort of answer, so I'd try to come up with the most intelligent sounding one as possible. So if your parents do the same thing, they ask you, so what did you learn today in school? Instead of saying nothing. How many people say nothing? Yeah, lots of people say nothing. Um, you should tell them today, we learned about the trigonometric ratios. Say that, everyone say this. We learned the trigonometric ratios. We, we better try this. Oh, oh, hold on. We're gonna try this again. Trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios. Okay. Hey, what'd you learn today in school? Oh boy. We're gonna try this. We learned the trig o no metric ratios in math. We learned the trigonometric ratios in math. So I guess in order to be truthful, in order to be truthful that you did learn the trigonometric ratios in math, we need to learn some phrase. Hopefully you remember it from yesterday. It was very simple. It was about three syllables, uh, four syllables, I guess. It had to do with like putting your foot in water. Um, something about toa. Yeah. Sokotoa, okay? Sokotoa. So here's how this is spelled. It's so ka toa. Now, now, why why was the uh, why was so? What did so mean? You guys are so smart. The sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Because dealing with a right triangle, you're always going to have some sort of angle. This is theta. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. Okay? I, I know that. That's fine. I haven't told you anything you need to write down yet. Okay? There's always the opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse. Okay? So if that's the case, what is cosine going to be? The adjacent over the hypotenuse. That is perfect. Thank you for saying that. With that being said, you may write that down. And also what I would like you to do is use your calculator to calculate the cosine of 21, 35, 39. Please round those to four decimal places. When you get your paper, you may begin. Actually, you could probably begin before you get the paper. You will need a calculator. If you'd like to borrow one, you can borrow one. Make sure your name is on the board. Oh, that'd be violent, hurtful. Oh, I think, I, did I give you an extra one? Here, I'll take one of those. Thanks. Sarah, you're calculating trigonometric ratios, go. So write your name up there, but you have to write it again. Oh, okay. Okay. Again, hopefully you are done with this because it does not take very long. The cosine of theta is going to equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. If these were specific numbers over here, like, oh, I don't know, 7 and 15 and 25, I'll just make up those numbers there. Um, what would the uh, the cosine of theta turn out to be? 7 over 25, which we could simplify and, and round to four decimal places, right? I think we could do that ourselves. Um, Tucker, what's the cosine of 21 degrees to four decimal places?
What's that? Is that four decimal places? Yeah, I need four decimal places. Zero point what? Okay, can you do the cosine of 21 for me? Because it's because it's a five eight originally five eight, uh, we look at the we look to see if we run the five. We look to the eight since eight is bigger than five or bigger than four, I guess. We round the the five up to a six. Hopefully that's good. Uh, cosine of thirty five degrees Carrington. Cosine of thirty five degrees. Carrington. Cosine of thirty five degrees. You've already worked on it for like the last four minutes. You type in cosine, hit 35, hit enter. Oh, okay, got it. Two. Very good. Uh, let's see. Claire, the cosine of 39 degrees. Seven 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 one is absolutely correct. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Okay, is everybody able to calculate those with ease? With ease, excellent. I am so happy about that. Okay, next, we're not going to do all these problems because it's going to take us way too long. I don't know what's taking us so long this class period, but we're going to keep moving. It says find the cosine of arc, find the cosine of s, just to make sure this works. It says write each answer as a fraction. And as a decimal run into four decimal places, is this really similar to yesterday? For real. Okay, so if we're going to do the cosine of r, cosine of r, I look at r, r is right here. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse, okay? Hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. It's always the longest side. The adjacent side and the hypotenuse are always what make up the angle. It's the one that makes up the angle with the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse and adjacent the one that are the ones that make up the angle. Hypotenuse and adjacent. And the opposite side is the, the other one that's left over. Okay? Cosine is what ratio? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent side? 63. What's the hypotenuse? 65. In your calculators, every single person put in 63 divided by 65. Raise your hand when you have your answer. 63 divided by 65. Nicole, what do you have? Did you get 0 0.9692? Okay, excellent. That was very good. Now we're going to do a separate problem. We're going to do the, the cosine of S. Okay, and that's going to change some of these things around, isn't it? The cosine of S. So based on S being over here, this is S. Okay, Nicole, what's my adjacent side going to be if I'm looking now at S? Is it going to be 16 or 63? I don't know if that's right. That will be the opposite side, the adjacent side. So the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are what make up your angle. Adjacent actually means that it's next to. Yep, 16 is the adjacent, 63 is the opposite. Uh, hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. It didn't change. These two will change around. What was your question? Let, let's start over. We're dealing with angle S. S is right here. First thing to do, where's your hypotenuse? Yes. How do you know? It's the longest side. 
Okay, now your hypotenuse and your adjacent side make up your angle. So which one's the adjacent side? 16, perfect. Which one's your opposite side now? Do we even need to know the opposite side for this? Nope. Uh, over here? Oh. oh the, of the fraction, yes. So far. Monday we will not. Yep. So it's going to be 65 on the bottom. It's, op it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side now? 16. In your calculator, 16 divided by 65. Uh, raise your hand when you have 16 <laughs> divided by 65. Brett, what do you have? Two, four, six, one. How many people have that? Holy Christmas cards. So it should be a two, because we need to round that last one. Yikes. OK, the next one. Let's do it this way. It, we're going to skip these next two. We'll go over here. Hannah, we're going to find the cosine of x, then we'll find the cosine of y. Hannah, help me label this picture for the cosine of x. Okay. For this, cosine is what ratio? Over hypotenuse. So what does that turn out to be? Can you simplify that fraction? They're both divisible by three. Actually, they're both divisible by nine, technically. Three over five. You know what three divided by five is? Zero point six. 0.6, there it is. Nice work. Okay. Cosine of y, I need someone else. I'm going to write this in a different color, actually, is what I'm going to do. Uh, cosine of y, I need a volunteer to help me with this. Lachey? Which, for y, cosine of y, what's the, uh, what are the sides? Yes. I agree. What's the ratio for cosine? Sokotoa. What's the ratio? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What's our adjacent side? Okay. Can you simplify that? They're both divisible by 9, right? So that's 4 fifths, which turns out to be what? Point eight. Excellent. If you're a boy, do this problem. If you're a girl, do this problem. I mark it, I go. Shh. Oh, do it silently. The one that says G above it. Yes, sir. As long as it's written out, we would know which one's which. Be fun.
From X, this is the adjacent side. That's the hypotenuse. For X. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, please check your answers. It says the cosine of X for the boys is this. The cosine of Y for the boys is that. The thing that the boys need to watch is to make sure that you know how to sim that you need to round correctly. I underlined these last two digits just because I rounded them. I want you to watch that to make sure you know how to round correctly. For the girls, the part that you need to watch, uh, 13 divided by 26 turns out to be 1 half. Make sure that you simplify your fraction. And that gives you just 0. 0.5, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, the harder thing over here, you have 13 square root of 3 over 26. That turns out to be the 13 and the 26 are basically 1 half. So it's square root of 3 over 2 is your simplified fraction, which gives you 0. 866. So that's your answer. It's kind of a weird answer. Just so you know. Any questions? Okay, let's try cosine of y again. Cosine of y, this is from y, this is the adjacent side. This is your hypotenuse. We're doing adjacent over hypotenuse, correct? So that's going to be 13 square root of 3 over 26. 13 and 26 are both divisible by 13. So I can change that into like basically 1 square root of 3 over, over 2. Like 1 half. But you don't need to write the 1 on top. So just square root of 3 over 2. Okay, in your calculator, you hit second x squared. That makes a square root. You put in 3. I'll hit enter. It should be like 1.7 something. Then you get divide by 2, enter, and you should get 0 0.86602 something, right? Okay, good. What's this? Yes. Is this the same thing? Is it the same thing? Okay, use the triangle sum. To find the measure of the missing angle. So the idea here is if this says 32 degrees, how big does this angle right here have to be? 58 degrees. Okay. So when we're working with this, so to find the value of each variable, well, we're just finding y. Do we need to figure out 58? Isn't this the adjacent side? Isn't this the hypotenuse right here? Then we just do the cosine of 32 degrees equals y over 18. And all I do is I cross multiply. So 1 times y is y. 18 times this is 18 times the cosine of 32 degrees. The adjacent. This is the angle we're talking about, 32, right? So that's adjacent to hypotenuse. Okay. Uh, let's show you what do you have. It says to, for a length, round in the nearest tenth for the length of a side. So what's the near? 15.3. Sounds good to me. Should we do one more of these? Uh, which one do you want to do? Should we do both of them? Yeah. Let's do both of them. Okay, from here, this is our hypotenuse. This is our adjacent side because these are the two sides that make up our angle of 48. So we'll do the cosine of 48 degrees equals 10 over A. Okay, this is a little more complicated. A little bit more complicated here. That's an A, by the way. We'll cross multiply. That'll give us, actually, is there an easier way, Mitchell, than cross multiplying? Just switch them, right? We'll switch these two around. So you have A equals 10 over the cosine of 48 degrees. That's what Mitchell told me yesterday. You can just switch those two around. It's basically part of cross multiplying. 
and it's it's right. Yes, is that good? Good job, Mitchell. So ten divided by the cosine of forty-eight degrees, Rashad. What does that give you to the nearest tenth? Ten divided by cosine of forty-eight. Enter. Okay, it says, uh, here's what we're typing in, Rashad. 10 divided by cosine 4, 8, enter. You got to put the co in there. Got it. So that should give you 14.9447655. Okay, to the nearest tenth, to the nearest tenth, since it says nearest tenth, we need to write 14. Point nine would be our answer here. A equals fourteen point nine. Riley, help me with the last one over here. Label the sides for us. What's five? Adjacent. What's V? Hypotenuse. So how do I? What do I set this up? Since I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which fu function am I working with? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Oh, okay. Cosine. So cosine of 71 degrees equals? Excellent. With these, I can just switch them, right? So that would be V equals 5 divided by the cosine of 71. In your calculator, Riley, 5 divided by cosine of 71. Yes, sir. For this one, the y is on top. You'll just multiply both sides by 18. Over here, when the variable is on the bottom, like these two, you'll just switch. What'd you get? V equals 15.4. Can someone verify that for us? 15.4. Excellent. I wish there were some story problems. There are not. Could you imagine doing these problems as well? You'll have to find the missing angle and move from there. Makes sense to me. We're going to work on your homework now just because we're running a little short on time. If you need help, 